Hi everybody, my name is Yoni Davidson and I manage Incredibles Professional Services. In this video I will demonstrate how to install Incredibles on your local machine. The demonstration includes the installation process of Incredibles two main components, the coordinator and agent. I have saved the Incredible installation file to my desktop, so let's start with double clicking Incredibles installation file. In the first dialog, we have a choice between a regular installation process, which is marked by default, or the automated installer. The automated installer creates an installation file that can perform a silent installation on each agent without going through the installation wizard. In this video, I will show you the default installation process, so we will keep the default option and move on. After reading the license agreement, mark the I accept checkbox and click next. Incredible consists of two main components, the coordinator, which acts as a server and controls the resource allocation. These components must be installed only once and all the agents must be connected to it. The second component is the agent itself, which allows starting a build or participating as a helper machine when a build is started on another agent. This dialog box presents three options, the incredible agent, which is marked by default, Incredible Coordinator, and the Incredible Backup Coordinator, which backups the main coordinator in case of a failure. In this demonstration, I will skip the installation of the Backup Coordinator, since it is not mandatory. It is recommended to install the Coordinator first, and then add the additional agents. There is no need to install the Coordinator on a separate machine, since it is a very light component and the only prerequisite is that the machine on which the Coordinator is installed will not be turned off, like with regular servers. Since it is possible to install the Coordinator and the Agent on one machine, I will simply select the Incredible Coordinator option as well and press Next. Here we can specify the installation folder of Incredibuild. I just keep the default settings. Since we have chosen to install the coordinator, this dialog displays the current port that will be used in order to connect to the coordinator on this machine. The default port is 31104, and unless there is a special reason to change it, it is recommended to leave as is. This dialog shows the default port setting for the agent. The primary communication ports are 31105 and 31106. Additional ports will be automatically used according to the machine cores amount. For example, if the machine has 4 cores, the additional ports that will be opened will be 31107 to 31110. The CPU configuration dialog displays your hardware configuration which is automatically detected by Incredible. There is also a file cache section which determines the file cache size, but it is usually kept as is. So basically we are done and both the coordinator and the agent are being installed on this machine. I don't want to see the release notes, so I just uncheck the checkbox and press finish. After the installation is complete, it is possible to see the incredible tray icon with an exclamation mark. This is because the license file was not yet loaded on the coordinator that was installed along with an agent on this machine. In order to load the license file, make sure that it is present on this machine and simply double click it and wait for the confirmation message. Once clicking the OK button, the coordinator monitor will be open and display the current agent status and information. In this short video, I have demonstrated the ease of incredible installation on local machine with its two main components, the incredible agent and coordinator. In order to see how to use Incredible with Visual Studio and install additional agents, please refer to the following link. In case you have any questions, please don't hesitate contacting me. To start using Incredible, download it at www.incredible.com.